Welcome everyone to the half a million subscriber celebration week. Today is the first video of eight videos this week. A Flat Earth Friday video, of course. And to celebrate, I've just released this new design of t-shirt in the Simon Dan shop. It is a Globe Earther t-shirt. Well, let's be more precise. It's a Globe Earther, i.e. normal person going about their day t-shirt just released in the Simon Dan shop. The link for these is in the description and if you get anything in the Simon Dan shop between now and the end of this week, the 17th, you can get 25% off by using the code SMD25. Well, let's get on with the show, shall we? And what better way to start a week like this than with CC Chris from New York, Westchester County. <laughs> Welcome along to this Monday edition of another Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Okay, so we are kicking off this week with CC Chris uh, from New York, and he's in his van, of course. And he's kicking off about Voyager 2. What a surprise. Away we go. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Uh, CC here, Chris from New York, uh, Westchester County. It's 111023. It's a Friday. I like to give you something to think about on a Friday, just in case if I'm unable to uh, put a video out for the weekend. I love it when he's in deep thought like that. A couple of things I, I want to just review here. Uh, I'm going to get right into uh, um, Voyager 2. I mean, this is to reinforce space. That... They want you to still think it exists up there, so they gotta they gotta put shit out, you know, nonsense. Like Voyager still being out there after forty five after fifty years, forty five years, or however lie they made up forty five years ago or fifty years ago or a half a century ago, whatever it may be, it doesn't make make a difference. Forty six and a half years ago, Chris, nineteen seventy seven. Couple things I do have a problem with if Voyager did still exist is first off there's a fuel problem okay that would be number one there's really not but please continue um the fuel life shelf life is approximately i don't know on a car maybe about a year you get out of it uh maybe a year and a half at best jet fuel about the same even if you can go five years i would be quite impressed but this is magic liquid from nasa that's right their fuel, their liquid, lasts hundreds of years! Hang on, Chris actually thinks that Voyager 2 is powered by some internal combustion engine? Amazing. If he had bothered to do just a smidge of research, which surprises me because Flat Earthers always like to do their own research, he would have known that Voyager 2 uses radioisotope thermoelectric generators to power itself. Now they work by converting the heat released by decaying plutonium-238 into electricity. But none of that power is needed for propulsion. Now Voyager 2 did have traditional rocket fuel on board when it first launched, and it used the last of that in a burn to position itself to view Jupiter before it jetted and the tanks. And since space is a vacuum, Newton's first law comes into play. And with nothing to change its course, Voyager 2's velocity has been almost constant since it left the inner solar system. And it uses that power generated by the radioisotope thermoelectric generators for all its onboard instruments. They even said that Voyager 2 could outlast the human civilization, that it could just spend millions of years drifting around. Yes, well, if nothing stops it, it will keep going. You know, I anybody in their right mind would say, hey, wait, and, you know, I, and I, I was reading up about it, too. So he did do his research. Um, apparently, back when they launched this, you know, back in the 60s, late 50s. 1977, Chris, but yeah, you read up on it, I'm sure. Right around the time, you know, we figured out that... that the earth is flat and we're covered with a dome and we have a purpose here. Uh, so they had to come up with space and all that, NASA and all that other nonsense. Um, but my problem is the trajectory and the mathematics of using all of the planets out there as slingshots because they want to conserve fuel, of course. Yes, after the burn to Jupiter, all the gas giants were used to redirect Voyager 2 on its journey 
to the outer solar system. And to do this, they use those planets' large gravity wells. You know, because once they're out in deep space, which I think it is supposedly out in deep space, fake space, is that, is that where it is? I think it's, it's past beyond the solar system. And forget about that, that we're, you know, the solar system's like moving uh, like 66,000 miles per hour, you know, but that, that would have been gone if it did exist. The solar system and Voyager 2 were moving at the same velocity, yes. And the universe, I mean, and, and, and the galaxy moving at uh, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of miles per hour. You guys, you're lost. You're lost. But, okay, back back to what I was saying. So it's, it's using the planets to, uh, you know, slingshot off. And that's how it managed to get out there now. <laughs> Correct. Yes. I, I, I can't even keep a straight face and say it. You know, I, I really can't. How scientists could actually sit down and say this and tell people that this is true is beyond me. Now, flat earthers like practical demonstrations, Chris, so have a look at this one. Imagine Voyager 2 is one of those marbles and you can see quite nicely how it can use a massive object like a planet to turn course. While we're on the uh, subject of uh, planets, um, Van Allen discovered a belt, the Van Allen belt. It's a poisonous uh, belt and apparently uh, it's radiation, guys, you know? Not radiation. Okay, I was a bit too flippant there. They are quite dangerous, yes. Um, I think my belief on it was before they figured out that the Earth was flat and we're covered with a dome, space doesn't exist. I, I think, you know, Van Allen came out. Well, let me see, let me see. No, Van Allen must have come out with it before we did the launch. You know, that we supposedly landed on a fake moon somewhere, you know, uh, in Arizona. Pick your choice, I don't know, some remote area, studio somewhere, shall we say. Yes, that was in 1958, Chris. Um, I think once they figured out that there's no space, Van Allen came out and said, okay, why don't we just invent the belt? You know, a poisonous belt, a radiation belt, you know, something that we can never get through. But then, wait a minute. The Americans, the USA, that's right, us, said we can go into space. Watch us. Van Allen was American, and he worked on American spacecraft. Wow. So, all the technology we had back then managed to get us into space. Where was I going with this? Oh, okay. Forget about that. Um, okay. So, back to the Van Allen belt. Now, my problem is... What about the other planets? Do the other planets have a Van Allen belt? Well, surely they must. All planets that produce a magnetic field do, yes. Because the radiation is coming from the sun. So, let me get this straight. All the probes and everything we've been launching off into space to these fake planets somewhere and, and sending and beaming back images are going through the Van Allen belt back and forth, back and forth. No problem at all whatsoever. None. Okay. The communication between NASA and its satellites is not affected by the Van Allen belt because it's not dense enough. And besides that, electromagnetic waves don't propagate with particles either. But I, I haven't heard anybody else tell me that if, are there any Van Allen belts on, on any other planets out there? Are we the only one? As I said, no, we are not. All the gas giants have radiation belts. <laughs> well, we seem to be the only one with a moon that's locked and stationary. Oh yeah, sure, it moves, but you only see one face. The only one around, right? Wrong. Most of the larger moons in the solar system are tidally locked to their parent planet. Now after this, Chris goes on a lockdown rant, which doesn't concern us here, so I'm gonna say we're all done and dusted for our first 500K celebration Flat Earth Friday video. What do you all think of Chris's performance in that one there? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching today, truly is appreciated. If you enjoyed it, please do subscribe to the channel. Uh, do I say now we're on the march to a million? Yeah, why not? Please do subscribe and hit the thumbs up button too. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day and I'll see you all tomorrow uh, for the second part of the Mandela 101 from Brian Staveley. See you then.